Hello, welcome. And we are talking to Vodacom's Chief Technology Officer, Andres Delport. And we're going to talk about a subject that I've never heard of before. It's a term called RAN. We'll find out more about RAN. And it's called RAN swapping. <laughs> what on earth is RAN swapping? Now, Aki, okay, very, very simple. You replace the base stations. Yes. Base stations and network. So people who see the towers, yeah. see the antennas, you know, at the bottom of the tower, there's normally a container. Okay. And inside that container is electronic equipment. Okay. So what you do is you replace the electronic equipment in, inside the container. Oh, okay. So you're just putting newer stuff inside yes. there. I mean, w yeah. what is actually at the bottom of that, uh, in, the, in that little box? Are there, yeah. there are batteries. I know there are batteries for so sure. There's a rectifier, and that's something that changes AC power to direct current power, you know, power that comes out of a battery, like a, a battery. Um, you have an air con in there. You have transmission equipment there. And you have radio equipment in the base, so, over and above the battery. So RAN stands for Radio Access, Access Network. Network. Yeah. Okay, so it's basically what makes everything work. Yes. Okay, so you just that carries the cores, that carries the tram, the cores or the data. Okay, so you're basically taking a, an old car engine, uh, an oldish car engine and putting a brand new engine. Yes, if you definitely. want to use that kind of analogy. <laughs> and why is adding this capacity so important? Because that yeah. stuff that you got, there's nothing wrong with it, right? Uh, okay, I wouldn't say that. Uh, first of all, uh, I think there are a few major advantages. Firstly, when you deploy a new technology, yes. you, in the past you always had to build a new network. You okay. know, so we had a 2G network and when we implemented 3G, we had to build a 3G network. And in theory, if you had the same philosophy, you would have had to build another 4G network. So it's costly and ex expensive, etc. Now what they do is you have something that co is called single RAN, which means I can have any technology on that base station. So I, today I can have 2G, tomorrow I can three, have 3G, and the day afterwards I can have LTE, and I can, can have a combination of them on the okay. base station. So the reality is, that's how we, you know, if I look at LTE, that's what allowed us to launch LTE so quickly. From the day we decided, before we placed any purchase order or anything, it took us six weeks to launch Just LTE. like that? Just like that. And that's the benefit. So the reality, you can roll out more. And then obviously you get the performance advantage. Yeah, yeah. So that's the second thing, the performance advantage. Um, the, the 3G base stations in the past that we had could do 14,400 um, kilobits per second. Yeah. These can now support LTE tens and tens and hundreds of megabits per second. And thirdly, it's also environmental friendly because if you look at the base station, if you replay the, replace the base station, mm -hmm. there's one or two other things that we do on the base station, you can reduce the energy consumption from anything from ah, 40 to 60 okay. percent on the base. So station. you've become a lot more efficient, the network is more agile, and the network Definitely. just operates much better, and it's yeah. good for the customers at the end. I would imagine, I mean, you've been in the business for 20 years, you've got you know hundreds of these base stations out across the country. I mean, how long has it taken to do this swap out? Okay, this is probably one of the longest projects or projects that lasted the longest that I've been involved in. We started in 2008. And six years later, we've now replaced all the base stations. We have actually not just hundreds, we have more than 10,000 base stations in the network. 10,000 yeah. base stations, and they've yes. all been replaced. All been replaced the last one two days ago in the Free State. I met in the Free State? Yes. Why did you leave the Free State <laughs> for last? No, it just so happened. Uh, <laughs> but I imagine that these boxes and the technologies become a lot smaller as well as, the, as, as technology has evolved, eh? They certainly do. And yeah. the capacity, capacity in a small box increased significantly. Does it cost a lot of money to swap these units out? No, it does. You know, the, what one has to consider, you know, when we started, we had just over 8,000 base stations in mm. the network, 8,500, mm. I think. Yeah. And to think about the cost, and the, 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 mo the, the most expensive part of the network is actually the radio network. Yes. And you have to comp replace the entire radio network. So it costs you billions of rands in the end of the day to replace the radio network. So, so like areas, for example, that aren't covered by LTE right now, you've replaced the technology, but later on when the, you know, the upgrades come and you want to put LTE, is it, is it expensive? Do you have to redo the whole process or is it a matter of just taking the... LTE building block and literally plugging into, into that existing infrastructure? Um, okay, it depends on the spectrum, but yeah. if I, for instance, we launched LTE on 1800, yes. 1800 megahertz yeah. spectrum. Yeah. So if I now have to carry, if I'm carrying voice on 1800 yeah. and I want LTE tomorrow, it is basically almost as easy as flicking a switch. The reality is why we don't do it is because you take away capacity from the voice network, okay. and if the devices aren't there, to the, on the take up on the LTE side, you know, you haven't really gained anything. <coughs> it's interesting you said that the environment earlier, and there's this massive focus on the environment. Everyone is going green, everyone's concerned about the environment. Why is this better for the environment? How is this better for the environment? Yeah, the reality is, you know, if you look at 
where does energy come from? You know, it comes from power stations, yeah. because we don't really have uh, um, hydroelectric um, power generation in the country, so it's coal, etc. So the reality is every bit of energy or electricity that you can save is good for the environment. Okay. And we, we know we also live in South Africa, which there is a constraint on energy consumption in the country. So anything you can do to use less power is actually good for us. I mean, percentage-wise, I know you can't give us an exact accurate percentage, but on average, what kind of percentages are we looking in terms of how much less power the average base station uses today versus, say, 15 years ago? At least 40%. At as least, much as that? At least 40%. As I, you know, so we, we, we replace the base stations to save energy, but yeah. we also do other things. You know, so, for instance, we have air conditioners in the base station. Okay. Air conditioners uses power. Yeah. So if you can use make the air conditioner go on for less time in the day, you also save electricity. So we have intelligence and we have fans that we build into containers, etc. All of that can save electricity up to 60% in the radio network. So tell me something, did they, like all the big cheeses here at Vodacom say, Andreas, he has 9 billion rand, spend it. Because you've, you've been spending a lot of money. I mean, is, it, is this part of the 9 billion rand? Yes, and it's certainly part of the nine billion rand. Yes, I've, I must admit I've never had so much money that I. I mean, could what's go and it like? You look year. into your bank account. You got <laughs> nine billion rand. You can just spend it okay, on whatever you like. You know, if, on, on if, network toys. As I say, if that was in my personal bank account, I wouldn't have this interview. <laughs> <laughs> but yes, it is nice. You know, what is actually nice is to to see that you invest the money, and yeah. you can actually see the improvement in customer experience. You can see the improvement in voice experience, you can see the improvement in throughput on data experience, and it's not just how we measure it, you know, I get it from people. People tell me the network is better, and you know, that's very satisfying to know you're doing all this work, putting in investment, putting in the long hours, and well, to a degree you get the benefit. Andres, well done. You're yeah? spending the nine billion rand wisely. Andres yeah. Delport, who's Vodacom's chief mm -hmm. technology officer, telling us about the network and how they're upgrading the network and mm -hmm. where they're spending the money. And as you can see, the environment for me, 40% down on energy saving consumption, plus improving your average call consumption and your average call quality. It's money well spent. Thanks. Thanks, Hockey.